the plan is we're lost somewhere in the middle of the United States and our plan is to come up with a new plan. Yeah, lost in the United States, but we're not upset about it. We're having actually a good time. <laughs> we're Narelle and Danny. We sold our business in Seattle and decided to become digital nomads. Outfitted with a Suboverlander as our home on wheels, we're on an adventure of discovery wherever the road takes us. Subscribe and join our journey meeting new people, seeing amazing things, and helping build new ventures and opportunities. Hey guys, just sitting here from Monique's and I thought I'd tell you about a little almost disaster that we had yesterday. This woman in this SUV pulled up behind us and she got out and she was like pulling groceries out of her car and everything and so she left her car there and so Danny put the car in reverse and hit the SUV. <laughs> um, she was parked a little bit like in the blind spot and he didn't see her pull up behind us. Um, luckily she wasn't in the car but like he got out and checked it out and there was like this tiny little scratch and she came back out and uh, he went back over to kind of tell her what had happened but she was basically like oh, I don't see anything like it's no big deal but while you're here could you help me she still had like a bunch of toilet paper and water and like all of the things that everyone's stocking up on because of coronavirus and so she would like ask for his help to, um, to carry stuff inside and so of course he was like yeah sure no problem Oh, I was so mad. Hello, everybody. Hey, guys. This is leg two of our Austin to Boston trip. And today we uh, had left Houston, had a nice morning brunch with Danny's cousin Jessica and Monique. And now we are on our way. We're going to get just outside of uh, Memphis tonight and camp in a dispersed free camping situation there. And then tomorrow we will go to Mark Twain National Forest and there's lots to see there. I'm very excited, uh, which will be nice after several months of not doing the national parks anymore. I think the last national park we did was in the Everglades, which was way back in January. So it'll be nice to do some of that a little bit before we get to Boston. And this wasn't on the schedule at all. We just saw it on the map. Yeah. We're like, what's that big green spot above Memphis? But and that's how we fly. Skip Dallas. We were gonna go there. We went from Austin to Houston to here. And then uh, tonight, we're gonna be almost to Memphis. Welcome to Arkansas. We Have you are been in. Here before? No, we have not. This is state number 20. Uh, 21. <laughs> 20. So we just. Uh, cross the border into Arkansas and we are here at the visitor center and just taking a pee break. We've been on the road for solid four and a half hours I think from uh, from Houston and we've got about two hours maybe a little bit more to go. Anyway when we left Houston it was 83 degrees out and here it's 53 which just feels like a total shock but I'm fine with it. Honestly it's refreshing. We are up uh, in a free spot to camp, just a little bit north of Little Rock, Arkansas. And I don't know if we're ready to end. I mean, things seem still kind of up in the air. This coronavirus has really put fundraising for Gobekli uh, in a big loop. Uh, Brian and I had a meeting yesterday just to figure out how we're going to pivot the way we're framing things. And like for me, the investors don't want to meet. And I mean, I hope we don't get it, but. Honestly, I'm not really too concerned. I'm sure that we can survive it just fine. It'd be, I mean, it'd suck. So it's scary, you know, in multiple, multiple ways. We don't know what's coming once we uh, actually make it to the East Coast. And if we should stop then, or if we should <laughs> circle back again and do a loop around the North and wait till later, put things on hold. I guess we just got to keep pressing forward. So as we were packing up with Natasha, I was looking at the map, figuring out what the itinerary is for this last month, and uh, was looking at the the route to Atlanta. We wanted to uh, stop by 
Memphis and Nashville and I saw this big green patch north of Memphis and some said Mark Twain National Park. We had no idea it even existed so we saw amazing things like caves and waterfalls and said you know what we need some nature therapy right now. On last night and I uh, had a little trouble getting started so just have to give it a little bit of fuel just to make sure it stays alive. It's kind of just like, you know, a super sleepy person without coffee and the gas is the coffee. Like us. Just like us. My guess is it's probably two and a half more hours until we get up there. We are going to do, you see how Mark, this is all Mark Twain National Forest. You got a bunch of stuff down here that we could do. So we are in Augusta, Arkansas, and we just stopped to get gas Population and, and coffee. Yeah, it's like a very small town. And I'm standing in the checkout line, and this guy comes up to me, and he goes, is that your SUV out there? And I was like, <laughs> sorry for the accent. Um, and I was like, yeah, it is. And he's like, do you guys have like a YouTube channel or something? And I was like, yes. And he's like, I think I've seen you. And he was just like really excited about what we were doing. And he came out and like chatted up Danny while he's bumping gas. Um, and told him about a cool like Indian cave with pictographs and waterfall inside, which I think we'll want to check out. It's up here, um, Mark Twain National Forest, where we're going today. Um, but yeah, just a really cool local guy. His name's Tommy. So thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and anybody else who sees us and, and recognizes us, just say hi. We love Yeah, you. we'd love to say hi yeah. and like should give you a little quick tour. Hey guys, so we are in Walnut Ridge, Arkansas, close to the Missouri border. Raining pretty hard, but it's okay because like hopefully we're gonna get to see some caves today. And so we'll be, you know, underground. Um, and hopefully and those aren't flooded. If not, then it's fine. We'll just go to the Ozark Riverway um, Visitor Center, get a sticker, um, and do more tomorrow. Now in Missouri, state number 21. Because we gotta count Washington. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. No, we don't. And they're welcome soon as a gas station. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> so, unlike the spots in our earlier part of the trip in the national parks, we have no idea what we are doing. Um, it looks like it's open. There's one person here. Yeah, it says cave open, so we're at Cave Spring Park in Current River Cavern. Um, There's a uh, some sort of visitor center over there. Yeah, we're gonna see what's up. It has an open sign on it right there. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Maybe they have a sticker because the other soon. main Ozarks place was not open. Did not have stickers. There's like six people in this entire town right now. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I get this. This makes sense. So we were advised by the uh, ladies at the visitor center, like if you want to go, you should like test your well, hand. Well, so the reason first. why is because the cave is flooded right now, up to yeah, somewhere around be, a foot. Yeah. So, so like up our calves these and stuff. Boots, yeah, they. So we need to do. It. We need to switch from the, our boots to water shoes. Mm -hmm. I think it's too cold. <laughs> oh well, there's more to see. Yeah. We are at Pinewood Lakes, or Pinewood Lake Campground, and yeah, it's free year-round, but there is nobody here. We have the whole place to ourselves. Hey guys, so we have some interior stickers to get caught up on, and these are places that we made stops at along the way, but aren't necessarily like national parks or major cities. They're, you know, as you can tell, just fun stuff we did. One of the things we had to do when we were in Texas was go to Bucky's which is a very weird store and quite overwhelming. Next one, Keep Austin Beautiful. We volunteered and pick up, picked up trash one day. 
did better than all the other volunteers. Once Natasha had arrived with us in Austin, we went to Zilker Brewing Company. Zilker Brewing. Had some great fried chicken and beer. We went to the Yeti flagship store when Natasha was with us in Austin. Finally, for our last night with Natasha, we went to a show at the Continental Club and got to see the Peterson Brothers perform. guys oh that was a good night's sleep but um I don't I was cold it was real cold anyway we're on our way to Anon Onondaga Cave State Park in um like the middle of Mer Missouri at the top of Mark Twain National Forest you're not supposed to wear the same clothing or um apparel that you wore in one cave and another one because of white nose syndrome so yeah, it's a thing I was reading about. What? Yeah. That's not a thing. It is a thing. It is not a thing. It's totally a thing. Because of what syndrome? White nose syndrome. It's a thing in the basket. Oh, so you could spread the... No, it's been so long since we were in girls that, like, whatever particles. I don't know. We'll this figure it out. So I think there are two gas stations here in town and both of them are closed and I think there's a hint on the second one, uh, big old cross, yeah, I think it's because it's Sunday at 11, uh, they have a sign that says welcome to the new owners and so I'm guessing they're at church right now, which maybe we have to wait till they're done with church. So that was unique. <laughs> we have not done that before. Water was only like five. Yeah, I mean, it was totally fine and not like we had to pull up the four wheel drive or anything, but. I was more worried about part of the bridge collapsing underneath our weight. That was cool. Well, we're off the edge of the now. Yeah. Yep, went in and talked to the park ranger visitor center. Um, and she said that the caves are closed for the season. They just gotta wait for the bats to wake up. Um, so it probably won't be until early April. So we're a bit early. But oh well. Um, and she said she didn't recommend going to the campground because they have a water problem. So the showers are not working. So there's really no point in us going there and paying for the night if there's no water. I say let's uh, explore east. Like, Head east? I, I think okay. we should. I think we should go to the town where there's cell phone reception. We still have half a day. Yeah. I mean, we. Okay, so this is where Mark it's Twain. Sunday, too. Yeah, so. this is where Mark Twain grew up. Like, yeah. I get it. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It's lonely. It was a great Sunday morning drive. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm good with whatever. I'm not, like, horribly disappointed. I'd like, like to find here. a hot lunch at some point. Yeah, there's one town out here. Um, mm -hmm. We can try to eat there and then uh, plan what the next route is. I think. Just because of the show Ozarks, I think we're halfway to Chicago. 
We're like, not going to Chicago. You don't want to go to Chicago? No, it's okay. too freaking cold in Chicago right now. Okay, so then there's Memphis. I don't know. Like, the plan is we're lost somewhere in the middle of the United States, and our plan is to come up with a new plan. Yeah, lost in the United States, but we're not upset about it. We're having actually a good time. <laughs> So we are, we left the... We're in Steelville. We're in Steelville. And we just pulled into a parking space. We're going to find some lunch. And this guy in a pickup truck full of kids pulled up next to us. And they, like, either followed us from where we were. Or I think they were, they were leaving. Into town. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. anyway they're like, he he's was like... the dude fishing on the bridge that was flooded oh, over. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he was like, uh, my kids looked you up. We love what you're doing. Like, we're going to follow you guys. Yeah. Good. This happens all the time. Those stickers, man. Famous. <laughs> Forgot to film the food because we were talking about getting the bite to eat. Let's go see some mounds. So the adjusted plan for today, we were trying to figure out what, what we were gonna do because the uh, the bats are sleeping. They didn't want us to wake them up or whatever. Yeah, caves are closed until April, yeah. so you guys can go see them because yeah. by the time this video is published. But. but uh, we were like, hey, maybe we will go to St. Louis. And then we were looking at things around St. Louis, and we found the, uh, the ancient Native American mounds, which are one of the reasons why we wanted to go to Mound Key down in Florida, but we weren't able to go. And it's only an hour and a half away, so um, from where we are in Steelville. So, quick change of plans. Yep. We're going to Illinois. Mm -hmm. Another state to add to the list. It was... Such a large settle. Saint Louis, Louis, meet me at the fair. Don't you tell me the lights are shining and in place was glare. We will dance the coochie coochie. I will be your tootsie woosie in the new world. Bridges is the first steel bridge ever made um, by Andrew Carnegie. He made a bet that his steel, Bethlehem steel, could span the difference of the Mississippi. And everybody was too chicken to try it out. Yeah, okay. Everybody was too chicken to try it out, so he got an elephant because there was a legend about elephants never walking on anything that they didn't think was secure. And he had the elephant walk across at first before people would uh, walk across the bridge to celebrate its opening. And I'm pretty sure it's still standing and it's one of these guys here. Not, not these new ugly ones, but the old ones over there. At least it's outside, right? Oh, the, the actual thing, yeah, but we don't get a sticker this time. The website said it was open. We can, yeah, I know. And it says to check the website for updates. You'd think that if the sign says to check the website, the website will let you know that it's closed. What you doing? Adding layers. Think it's enough? I think so. I decided to because it's kind of windy and I'm assuming it'll be even brisker up there. So Norrell had a good point that it's probably closed because of the coronavirus and they don't want visitor centers open. Yeah, they have a bunch of events on their website that are canceled because of corona, but it said that the visitor center was open, so. Well, I mean, Mecca closed. So, I mean, I know the population density of people stuffed into Mecca is a little bit more than a visitor center at uh, some relatively unknown mounds. Yeah, relatively. Honestly, I mean, we were listening to a podcast on the way in here, and they are saying that this was probably the first city in America. I don't think so, though. I think they're way older cities. So the stuff you missed in history podcasts that we were listening to about Cahokia was saying that they had these walls surrounding the entire complex or city and it was two miles long. <laughs> the 
the beat. A little hike. So no caves today, but we did find an ancient city. Possibly the ancientest of North America, but I don't believe that. What was that, only 1,300 years old? Maybe. Well, either way, some people say the oldest, biggest, whatever. It's an ancient city. And uh, this was their little capital building with uh, all the important people and ceremonial stuff up there. But it is four o'clock. By the way, we can't get a sticker because the visitor center is closed. Thank you, coronavirus. Um, we have no idea where we're staying tonight. I'm thinking we may just head south and stealth it. Oh yeah, before we do that, turns out they actually have a wood hinge here. Big circle of logs to tell them what time it is. Um, or what time of the year it is, anyway. Well, that was fun. I'm, yeah, it was cold, but so worth it. I'm glad that we got a chance to see those. Like, hey, we wanted we to get to Mount Wood 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 Wood. which was another capital built out of mounds, but I think this was way bigger. So yeah, way bigger. Not supposed, on an island. Supposed but. to be the biggest in the U.S not on an island and also didn't take like an hour and a half to canoe out to only to see not that much. In so, bad weather. Yeah, yeah, bad weather. I mean, the weather wasn't great, but we weren't canoeing. I'm just glad we finally got to see some Native Amer American Indian mounds. Right. So now we are on our way a little bit further south um, to Southern Illinois to camp for the night. And then we will make our way to Nashville for the week. So we are out in the middle of nowhere and we were gonna try to camp here tonight. Um, some old county road, some people love uh, playing in the mud. It's we like came down. Bottom road or something it's something weird like that. Anyway, um, check out our tires. Uh, don't really want to get stuck in it. I'm gonna try to get out. We're gonna go back out to the front uh, of the park area and uh, hopefully spend the night there but hopefully I can get out of it too so here goes nothing these wheels aren't turning at all okay now they are stop the front's just getting more dug in All right, we're stuck. <laughs> Danny's gonna try and dig out the front a little bit. Good thing we have cell reception, um, so we can call for help like tomorrow, I guess, because it's almost six on a Sunday, um, or after six. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess worst case scenario, we just hang here tonight. <laughs> Luckily, we have our home with us. Um, but yeah, this is uh, just part of the adventure, folks. So what gets me is all these guys got out of the mud right here. What's our problem? Okay, here's the situation. It's like uh, 7.30, something like that. We were gonna try to camp here. But it turns out, beneath the uh, three inches of mud, there is a, like 18 inches of clay mud. 
and goes really far down there. So we got about that far and got totally stuck. With the sun setting here in about like 10, 15 minutes, um, I think the best thing to do is uh, just camp here tonight and then tomorrow I'm hoping some of this clay, which dries pretty quickly, will have dried out of the tires. And then also we're gonna use the woods as a resource and last case scenario, there's a farm right there. We'll give them a call. Uh, I think we have the materials, we're just running out of light and we wanted to find a camping spot. Anyway, the uh, car is not exactly level, but that's fine, you know? Um, I'll just kind of cuddle with Norelle a little bit because my side leans her way. Um, not gonna be too cold tonight, about 36. Um, so the good news is, is this isn't gonna freeze. Um, I was able to dig the tires out a little bit. We don't want the mud to freeze around it, but. Uh, and also, more good news. We have about two or three bars of reception. So we just got off the phone call with Joe and Emma and uh, <laughs> they were laughing at us, uh, rightly so. Uh, I'm glad we finally got stuck in the mud. It means we're doing this overlanding thing right, right guys? Hey guys, it is uh, about 6.40 in the morning and uh, obviously still stuck here in the mud and know you guys can't see anything. Uh, the reason why we're up so early is I uh, did a bunch of reaching out on Facebook last night and connected with one of the Freemasons Lodge lodges that's uh, up north uh, about 15 minutes. The guy who responded looks like he's uh, secretary, past master, and sheriff's deputy. He said he'd be here around 6.30ish to try to help us out, so we're just uh, hanging out, waiting for him to show up. See if we can get unstuck here. But this mud is thicker than mud. It is like blue clay. Um, just walking in it, it takes to my feet and uh, adds about 10 pounds to my shoes. breakfast and I think next Walmart we see we'll be getting some toe straps. Yeah. Apparently our problem was we parked right where the uh, levee tries to keep the bayou in place and that makes nothing but thick silt like that. It sticks to your shoes like nobody's business. We were camping with uh, Oakwood Bottoms right next to the Old Muddy, which is quite um, appropriately named. I mean, I'm so grateful for Ronnie and his son coming out and helping us um, because, yeah, there's no way we could have gotten out of that without a toe. A little humbled. A little humbled <laughs> by that whole thing. Um, and yeah, we didn't know what we were doing. I'm sure Ronnie's like laughing at us. Um, but yeah, really appreciate him. Thanks, Ronnie. Norella had a uh, 9.30 call. We were gonna try to go into Starbucks 
but we show up and there's a sign on the door saying that they've been all shut down uh, except for the drive through window. So we are somewhere on our way to Nashville, about two hours out. Uh, of course, this coronavirus thing throws us all for a complete loop. Um, the restaurants, fortunately, in Nashville are still open. I need to adjust the whole strategy for how we're raising funds, how I uh, frame things to investors when they just lost all their money on the market and still plummeting. Um, yeah, I mean, things are tense. We don't know how things are going to be when we uh, get to Boston. Um, it's, it's tough out there. Um, feel for everybody. So as if it wasn't enough to strand us by having basically no real restaurants, bars, or whatever, just Panera Bread and only halfway open, decided to rain and uh, make being outside nearly impossible too. So this half is quite the adventure. 